I am so ready to see God move. Amen? Amen. This series that we're on has been a good series. I've really enjoyed it. The last part of this series that we're hitting into, um, I am going to get to, Lord willing, but I do have a word. As I sat and walking around doing just some things as I usually do, but a little differently, I feel like we've been as the body of a whole. Now, the Big C, somebody say Big C. The Big C Church, which means Church Universal, the Big Big C. I believe we've been wrapped up into to surrender and chained up into something that we don't need to be chained up to. I believe God's been trying to release us. As a matter of fact, that song goes with it. We're fighting a battle that's already been won. Look to the person beside you and say, stop fighting what's already yours. So, you know, sometimes what we end up doing in the midst of the battle, we're fighting a battle with the one that already won the battle. And he's like, I want to give you the victory, but you're fighting and you can't just take the victory. All he wants to do is give it to you. And all we want to do is fight. We want to try to strive for it. I want us to go really quick before I get into the sermon. I was going to say, is it okay to do that? But I really, I'm going to do it anyway. So there's no sense in asking. I want you to go to Luke with me. Luke chapter 18. Very familiar story. Look to the person beside you and say, stop surrendering to your old grumpy self. Yeah, did you say you want to say it again? Jennifer, let's do it again. Look to, look to the person beside you. She, she want to do it again. Look to the person beside you and say, stop. Go ahead. Stop fighting with your old grumpy self. Stop surrendering to your old grumpy self. See, that old self is dead, but you let him rise back up again. Mm, that's good. That's good. Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 35. Let me hear you say amen when you are there. As Jesus was approaching Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. Now hearing a crowd going by, he began to inquire what this was. They told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he called out saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way were sternly telling him to be quiet, but he kept crying out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. As Jesus stopped and commanded that he be brought to him, and when he came near, he questioned him, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, I want to regain my sight. Mm, There's so much in this. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and began following him, glorifying God. And when all the people saw it, they gave praise to the blind man. Hmm. The sickness. The battle. It didn't go anywhere but God, didn't it? So I want you to go with me now to John chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 8. And when you're there, I want to hear you say amen. amen. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have and that it might be abundantly given to them. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. 
So here's what I truthfully believe, and this is where I feel like the word's leading me to today. Understand this is not my series, but I want you to get it. We have called ourselves free. We have called ourselves surrendered. But we've done it under one thing, the strong man. See, when we, we go about walking the face of the earth, we're going to get hurt, we're going to get rejected, we start to fall to all kinds of Delilahs. And when we fall to a Delilah, a strong man, stronger than I, comes to you, stronger than you, and he chains you up. So what we end up doing is we see the strong man knowing that we can't get too far, and we see the mass size of the strong man and the chains, rattle them chains. We hear those chains and automatically... I'm done. I surrender. I surrender. So the strong man starts to chain us up. And what we end up doing is trying to tug against the strong man in surrender. And the whole time we're fighting Jesus instead of letting Jesus come in to set us free. See, this is what happened here. We want to declare we're free. And I'm, you know what? I just, I'm just going to say it. Some of you have been following Jesus for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Some of you maybe even 50 years. Maybe some of you longer. You've been worshiping and praising God, but you've been doing it with chains on. You've been doing it with, you know what, I don't like this church. I don't like this. I don't like the way God moves. I don't like what's happening in my life. I don't like the sickness that's going on. I don't like the, the, the raps that I'm in. So we're surrendering to the strong man all the time, trying to raise our hands in praise, and we can't because we're chained to the strong man. And I truthfully believe that setting in here today are people that need to be set free. Mm. Y'all need to get this. See, the strong man, he's going to get a hold of you and he ain't going to let go. You could get, and you know what he really wraps himself on? Religious freedom minds. Minds that are so wrapped up in religious that they can't move and all they do is I'm done, I'm done. God, you don't move that way. You ain't going to set me free no more. I can't get out of the bottle. I can't get out of my dope. I can't quit lying. I can't quit, quit cheating on my spouse. I can't quit, quit gossiping. I can't quit pouring. I can't, I can't quit. I can't, I, I can't quit. I just, I, I got to get my fix. See, I'm surrendering to the strong man's chains not realizing that I'm already free. See, the whole part, thank you, Rusty, the whole part of really walking where God has called us, church, this whole thing on relationships deals with this. You are chained up. Man, I, re I really got to put this. You are chained up into something where you think you're free and you're not. You're thinking you're finding freedom at the end of the bottle. You're thinking you're finding freedom at the end of your, your, your bone or your bong. You think you're finding freedom in the end of that, that conversation that just ate up every person around you. You think you found your freedom because you stand against the church. You think you find your freedom because you're out there feeding the homeless, clothing them. See, the only place you find freedom is under the blood of Christ. And here's the crazy part. Where the true blood of Christ is, there's no chains. None. Today, right where you're at, I feel it burning. It's burning in my belly. You've been trying to live your life free, and you can't. Matter of fact, some of you, some of you got to this point where you started to fall away from the faith, and some of you already fell away from the faith because you're afraid that you're not free. See, the devil wants to hit you, and he wants to hit you right square between the eyes. You know, when we anoint people with that, that oil and we make that, that, that cross, we're saying X marks the spot, devil. And he does all the time. He hits you right in a minute. The Spirit of the Lord moves across you. You're excited. You're happy. You're joyful. Then what happens? You start to get hit. Your joy's taken. Your freedom's gone. Now your hope is a little bit shaken. What do you reach for? Whatever's going to be that delight that filled that spot before. And you do. The things that start to, to, to spark against the, the things of God, relationship, instead of it being covered under the blood, start to come in between this. The relationship of husband and wife. The relationship in the home. 
So now the home is in disarray. There's a battleground there. And in that battleground, you're ready to reach out for something even more. And we're not understanding we are set free. Jesus did not turn and say, those who I set free are half free. Those who I set free might be free. Those who he set free are free indeed. In other words, free completely to the uttermost, to the othermost, to all the most. Everything. There's nothing in between. There's not one thing, please listen to me, not one thing that you're not set free of. Not one. I want to speak this. I'm going to be very careful how I speak this. So be just, just be gentle. I can't say just be gentle with me because I ain't going to be gentle. Some of you have been laying on your backs too long trying to find freedom on another person. Some of you have been playing a game that you shouldn't be playing. You're playing this roulette where you shouldn't be doing. Taking your clothes off, doing things you don't need to be doing. I'm telling you right now, you're inviting the devil in to destroy you. Some of you, some of you entered a conversation where you've been doing nothing but lying, building yourself up because of your insecurities, your fear. You're so afraid somebody would see to truthfully who you are. So you're putting on this facade that I'm the best, I'm the coolest, I'm the greatest, man. I got it going on. Well, you ain't going to be as cool as me anyway. It ain't going to matter. Just you try all you want. This ain't going to happen. So Bradley, you just got to quit, brother. <laughs> See, understanding that when we look through the blood, we find our security in him. Guys, right now, before you can walk into the destiny of whatever's there, you could go out and have the biggest church in the world, the biggest business in the world. You could have the most money in the world. I mean, my gosh, look at Donald Trump. <laughs> we could sit and we could look and go from one to another to another, and we're going to find fault in every person, right? We're going to find fault where these people have it all, and yet they have nothing. Where does it put us? Where does it put us? It puts us right back on the road that if we don't declare our freedom, then there's no reason to even say we're free. Declaring it is walking in it. Aren't you tired of waking up every day being miserable? Aren't you tired of every day waking up and that enemy so surrounding you and he's rattling those chains and you're just as quick to go ahead and surrender to it, not remembering you're free. People that are alone, that are all by themselves, man, they start struggling. They start struggling because people can't handle it. You were never meant to be alone. Get out of that cave, prophet. Come on, hermit, get away from there. You were meant with community. You were meant to be around people, around the glory of the Lord. What draws us is the glory of God. What stops us is the fear of the enemy. Is it going to be a battle? It's already won. Yeah. Is it going to hurt to crucify yourself? Absolutely. But the battle for you to do that has already been won. This man knew this. This, what so astounds me is in that he says that I might see again. How many of you have seen before and then something hurt, something happened, a hurt hit you, a, a disappointment was there, a, a something that happened, maybe a traumatic experience between you and your spouse or you and your children and some falling away, something that was there and now you can't see clear. You can't see your way out. You don't see a dream. You don't see a vision. All you see is just death and destruction. All you see is to give up and walk away. When all you have to do is cry out for the son of David the same son of David that he was talking about Jesus is the same son of David that is today waiting for you to cry out to him. Yeah. Waiting. Waiting. And all the ones online, it's the same thing. It's the same Jesus. And he does the same thing. This is not so that you can actually try to get your fireproof insurance and all. It has nothing to do with that. It's about you knowing who set you free. It's about walking in who set you free and knowing that there's greater on that side like you've never seen. In and out of jail doesn't have to be a physical jail, church. Aren't you tired of being labeled? I don't want, 
I'm at this point, to be quite honest with you, I don't want to be careful because I don't want to get hammered for this one. So the Lord makes sure I say this right. I'm almost at the point of being embarrassed that I'm even a part of the church in this country. With where we have led the church, with where the people have been led, mommies, daddies, grandparents, you have cursed the church so much to your children, you want to know why they're walking away. Mommies, daddies. You've been bringing up alcohol and every other delight that comes about and you want to know why your children are running away. This isn't so. This isn't here. There was a devotion under here that absolutely changed your life. And this is what this guy saw. He didn't play religion. He played, I needed you, God. I need you now. I'm hurt. I've masked my hurt up in so many different ways. I'm a liar. This is exactly what I heard the Lord tell me. He said, you're a liar. I'm like, yo, Jesus. <laughs> no, I, I, I did that years ago. I don't do that. You say you don't, you don't remember them. He said, no. When people talk about you, when they leave the church, and they talk about you and they lie, they make up things. You keep saying it doesn't hurt. You know it hurts. And you lie. You know you're called names. You say it doesn't hurt. You're a liar. When are you going to face it? Then let me heal you. Lord, I'm sorry. See, I've learned something out of all this, and, and I really want to get into this, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to. This is about how we're raising children. And this is right where we're at. Right where we're at. Where do we want to be, church? When's the last time you really got open with God? You said, Lord, this did hurt. And I'm done with it. I need healed. I'm tired of falling to everything around me. I'm tired of causing disruptions everywhere, being a bully. I'm tired of not knowing you. So let me speak this. Sometimes we, don't, we can't hear God because we don't know God because we really don't want to know him. We hear the word, and I love how Jesus put that. We hear the word and we receive it with joy, but because there's no root, it gets gone. What good is it if we gain the world we lose our soul. Something to think about, isn't it? So if I was to go a little further, and I was to ask, and I would want you to be honest. Is everybody in here honest? Let me see your hands. Wow, half of you honest, the other half are liars. Least you an open liar, you know it, right? The other are hiding it. <laughs> so with that being said, I really want you to just, just be honest here. How many of you can see where there's been something in your life that you've been reaching for and you haven't been set free? Let me see your hands. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Don't you think it's time to give that up? Don't you think it's time to let all that go so you can be set free? I don't want to be chained up to the strong man no more. I don't. That same chain goes right here. I could be chained up to where I find my sufficiency in this. 
I find my happiness, my money, my, vo my motivation in this. And all that's doing is masquerading the true hurt that's here. The true, the, the, the true void that's in my own heart. We have to embrace this. So here's what I want to do. And Lord willing, if we get to, I've got 14 minutes left. Definitely ain't going to touch it. I want us to open up today. And I really want us to let things go. Jesus said one thing. He said, my house shall be a house of who said that really quick? Somebody did. Who did it? Uh, Miss Crystal. That's good to see you. How many of you believe that? Let me see your hand. How many of you believe that we're supposed to be praying people? Let me see your hand. So let me ask you a question. Why are you still chained up? Because if you're people of prayer, those chains fall. It's in that, it's in prayer where deliverance is. It's in that, it's in that prayer where healing is. It's in that prayer where being radically renovated is. I don't know anything else. I don't. I bet you that, it, that you were married if you would ask your spouse what needs to go in your life. They'd be able to tell you in a minute especially if they were honest. They might even say you. <laughs> Plead the blood of Jesus, right? <laughs> I think now, better than any time, is the best time to seek deliverance. To cry out like Bartimaeus did. All those things are not going to get you anywhere. You have to surrender it all. You could have every tag, I'm telling you. You could know every scripture in the Bible. You could know every version of the Bible. You could know every Greek, Hebrew word that was in there, every Latin word, every Aramaic word. Man, I could keep going. You could name all of those things, and I'm telling you right now, and still be chained up to the strong man. Proof? Real quick proof? What is your relationships like? What do they look like? You have a bunch of dead man's bones laying around you? People that were once close to you that are no longer close to you because you don't know why, maybe it's because you ate them up. Your family not being fruitful in the things of the Lord, maybe it's because you ate them up. See, we're all going to mess up. But it's knowing that God sets us free from it and he fixes us in it that makes the difference. It is. So here's what I want to do. All of you that had your hands up. Blind Barimaeus, he sat there and when he heard that Jesus was coming, he heard that he was coming. He starts yelling for mercy. How many of you just, just this past year, was in your car, in your corner, in your, your closet, on your knees, and you were yelling for mercy. God, I need you now. I need you to touch my body. My body's sick. I need you to touch this relationship. My relationship's falling apart. My marriage is no good. There's nothing there. God, I need you now. I don't know how to get any further. I don't. The bottle is drowning me every second. That worm in the bottom is eating me alive. I got to get out. God, I need you. Sex has overtaken my mind, and it's not doing me any good. It's not fulfilling me anymore. We get there. Be honest, church. We get there. We get there. Aren't you tired of living in that? When Barnabas saw it, you don't need nobody laying hands on you. Jesus didn't lay hands on him. 
He said, do you really believe this? Do you really want this to work? Do you really want me to touch you? Do you really want this to happen? Do you really want to set free? That now takes it on your responsibility to get into your heart. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Set you free or make those chains tighter? Well, I don't know about you. The culture of this world is going to tell you to let that chain be held tighter. Mm -mm. Yeshua says, let me set you free. See, that spirit inside me so much there. I want to be set free. Oh, I want to be set free. I want to put that at you today. Right where you're at. He had to get up and go to Jesus. And when he went to Jesus, Jesus asked him. And Jesus granted him. And I love it. Because right afterwards, he was giving God glory. Glory. So that wasn't like what we hear of our modern day church. Shh, quiet, shh, shh, shh. It was, hallelujah, I'm free. He set me free. He did. He set me free from hurt. He set me free from rejection. He set me free from alcohol. He set me free from drugs. He set me free from sex. He set me free from the biggest thing of all, violence. He set me free. Now, I don't know about you, but he set me free. And when he did that, there's a love that absolutely took over. There's no color that comes in my mind. There's no, no, no walk that comes in my mind. There's no, there's no get away from me, you stink, even though Derek did. There's none of that that gets in my mind. <laughs> Inside joke, I was joking with him in there. It's one of those things that God set me free. Can you say the same thing? Can you say this today, that God set me free? Or can you say, I'm still chained and I need set free? Depression got you down? Discouragement? And there is depression and discouragement in the mind. I get that. And it's not always a demonic thing. I get that. But God can set you free. I just need you to get this. God can set you free right now. No need to wait. He did, Jesus didn't go, okay, blind Bartimaeus, understand you know this. Now I need you to recite to me what's got to happen now. He just said, dude, you can see. Go on. He didn't even tell him to say anything. We can win to people to Christ, to the kingdom. We can get them off their chains, out of that thing, out of that prison, if we ourselves are walking out of that chain, out of that prison. Because I don't know about you. Rusty, how long was you in jail? What did you feel like when you got out, bro? I didn't hear that. What was that like? <laughs> but you got to understand, Rusty, that woo was like, woo! <laughs> he just can't lift those arms up. They're too, too, too heavy. <laughs> Don't you want to be that? Aren't you tired of feeling rejection and not filling in anywhere? Aren't you tired of going from church to church to bar to bar to place to place and not finding what you need? Lie to lie to lie to lie to lie each time to try to make yourself something better and the whole time everybody's seeing right through you. Aren't you tired of it? Honestly, aren't you tired of it? Aren't you tired of constantly complaining, constantly seeing stuff that's negative? Aren't you tired of it? Aren't you tired of it? I think it's time to be set free. And I truly believe this is exactly where he's setting us today. He wants you free. Free. So I'm going to ask you, come forward. Come forward and say, God set me free. To the chains that's got me down and I can't move. To my rejections, to the hurts that was just said about me to the Facebook post that's tried to kill me, to the drink, the bottle that is calling my name. Lord, set me free. Set me free from the insecurities where i got to make myself out something where or I'm really not. Set me free. Set me free so I could do this. Michael, I love you more than you know. You're an amazing young man. Leading your family so well. 
leading the church, the ministry. And I don't say it enough, but God, I love you, boy. I am so, so proud of you. A much better man than I'll ever be. Be set free. Learn to love right. Just because you do ministry doesn't mean that you're living right. I know pastors that are so wrapped up. I know some of you that are sitting here today, you're so wrapped in a chain and you won't be set free. Man, I hear the Lord crying out, not Bartimaeus. I hear the Lord crying out. Will you come and let me set you free? Quit playing church. You played church for years and let me set you free. You're going from, from person to person. You're not getting what you need. I got it, he said. This is what he was telling the woman at the well. You think that divorce is going to help it? You think that anger is going to help it? You think that cussing is going to help it? You think that all that lying is going to help it? Only the well that I give you will satisfy you. That's exactly what he's yelling for you today. I'm throwing it at you. It's up to him. None of you or all of you, it don't matter. But I think it's time you come to the altar and you tell the Lord, I want set free today. And you let him change you. Father, I thank you for the word you've given me. God, I thank you for the love that you show him today. I declare I'm set free. I'm set free from the pressures and the weights of the world and the lies and the rejection. And gosh, and even the truths when you do, when I do fail, God, I'm set free from those things. I'm covered under the blood. I'm walking in the covenant. And I thank you that you are forever with me. God, I ask that you move upon the hearts of the people and the sound of the voice here and online. And today, you, will, you set them free. Oh, how I give you glory, Lord. I praise you. You online, whether you're watching today or you're watching later, if he's calling to you, I want you to stand right where you're at and put into that comment, I am free. Set me free. And you setting in here, if that's you, and a lot of you had your hands up, I want you to come forward and get set free. Don't stop until he sets you free. I am free, I am free, I am free indeed. 
I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free indeed, yeah, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free indeed, oh Lord, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free indeed, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free indeed, I am
I am free in the claimant church. I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free in the yes we are. I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free in the I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free in the Rusty, what'd you do with that chain? You didn't use it as a necklace, did you? Bring that thing here. Kinder, grab the, those two right there and bring here, please. The bread and the, the juice. So I want to speak something. We're getting ready to take communion. And I want to speak something. Like, Man, hey, guys, you know what? You're getting out of here like early. How many of you are thankful for that? No, you want me to keep going? I can do my sermon. It's good, just like that. So, here you go. Thank you. It needs something. He might, let me, let me say this. He might be big and all that stuff, but his heart's bigger than he is. Trust me. So, this was your chain. Some of you didn't bother coming up, whatever reason, that's between you and God. I ain't got nothing in that. This is your chain. This is what had you bound up, no matter what it is. You can now take this communion as Kinder Chad's going to be leading us here in a minute, which is really fitting. But you can now take this, your chain, and you can put it on the table of the Lord. And this is what you can say. For you to get back to me, you have to cross the blood in the body. I know you can't because anything that touches the blood in the body is healed, delivered, saved, completely set free. And you can't cross this. It's in the faith of knowing that it's by his blood, it's by his body that we have our freedom that we have our love, we have our healing, we have everything we need. It's by this, you're showing this act that, that, that no matter what it is, it's got to cross that to get to you. I did this years and years and years ago with tobacco. Tobacco just had me down. I was doing two cans of Copenhagen a day, still smoking some cigarettes. And man, it was just came about in that time. I was converted and wasn't born again. In the midst of that, I took that thing across the side. I did some other stuff, but I took that across the side, and I put that, that Copenhagen over there. I said, in order for you to get to me, you got to cross this now. And you need to understand something. I had the faith that what Christ did on the cross set me free. I have never wanted it since. Now, you're talking 20-some years ago. Let me even go further. When he set me free from alcohol... It was basically the same thing. I told it. In order for it to come back because Jesus healed me, he delivered me, you got to cross that. It, it can't cross into the covenant of the Holy One. 
and I've been set free. You don't need to go to a prophet or an apostle or, or to somebody that goes around faith. You've got the healer right here waiting for you. He lives right here. There's not one part of your life that is too far gone for God not to fix. He's in the job. This is his main thing, radically renovating lives. And I want you to be able to partake of communion this way. If, you, if you're one of those people that fight with fear, that fight with insecurities, here's your chance to get set free. I'm telling you, it's right here. Right here. Don't listen to these people that it doesn't happen. Don't listen to them that God doesn't do this no more. Mm-mm, no, mm-mm. Talk to the left because you ain't right. And if you want to keep talking, I'll throw punch you, man. What you going to do then? Just telling you. Shut the thing up. Do what you know to do. Do what he's given you. This isn't Mike Barone's words. This is scripture. This is absolutely scripture. If you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have life within you. But if you eat not of my flesh and drink not of my blood, you have no life within you. This chain reigns. Do you get it? Mass deliverance says that i got to bind something out and cast out of you. It's right here, right now, right there waiting in front of you to grab a hold of. Simple. Simple. I'm a Christian, though, Pastor. I can't be. Man, don't let, let's not go hunting on that, that territory because I'll shoot that thing in the head, too. Why do you think you're still captivated by the alcohol? Why do you think you're still captivated by the drugs? Why do you think you're still captivated by the lust? Why do you think you're still captivated by gossip and lying? Why do you think all that is? It's all because you haven't. So why do you think you don't have a relationship with Jesus? Why do you think you, you can't hear from him? You can't hear from him because you're chained up by a strong man who's whispering something and you can't hear your shepherd. Surrender to the shepherd and he'll get rid of the strong man. Boom! Says an Italian boy. Fat, bald Italian boy. Says scripture. So Kinder and Chad's going to come up and lead us. But I want this to be inside you. This is your chain. I don't care what it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's money. I don't know. Maybe it's your job. That doesn't matter. Put it up there and say, you know, it's on the Lord's table. In order for you to get to me, you got to cross it.